So let's talk through the process of what PNET desensitization therapy might look at if you were beginning with sublingual immunotherapy and then transitioning into oral immunotherapy. Sublingual immunotherapy, as I mentioned earlier, uses very low doses of allergen that are delivered to the mucosal space under the surface of the tongue. Your first dose of sublingual immunotherapy for peanut is only a fraction of a microgram of peanut protein, the equivalent of approximately one one millionth of a peanut. We'll do that dose in the office You'll hold the drop in place under your tongue for two minutes, giving the antigen presenting cells in the mucosal area a chance to travel to the drop, capture the allergen, and then take it back to your local lymph nodes and start to stimulate the immune response. Once the two minutes are up, you'll swallow, take a sip of water, rinse your mouth out, and drink some more. Once we've examined you in the office and observed you for 30 minutes, we will have confirmed that you tolerate the dose. Then you can continue taking that dose at home once daily for the next week. Then you'll come back to the office and we'll give you a little bit higher dose. Once again, you'll hold it in place for two minutes, swallow, be observed for 30 minutes, and continue that dose at home as well. This process will continue for approximately six months and you'll go through multiple different concentrations of allergen extract, each bottle being stronger than the bottle before. Over the course of the six months, your total dose of peanut protein that you'll be taking daily will increase from that one one millionth of a peanut to a final dose of approximately one two hundred fiftieth of a peanut. Once the sublingual phase of immunotherapy is complete, the patient is ready to begin oral immunotherapy. Oral immunotherapy begins with a procedure known as rapid desensitization. During rapid desensitization, the patient will be in our office for approximately six to seven hours. During that time, they will receive multiple doses of the allergenic protein given by mouth every 15 to 20 minutes. This very quickly binds up antigen binding sites on the IgE antibody and prevents a large-scale allergic reaction. By the end of the day, the dose of peanut protein will be around two and a half times the final dose of the sublingual immunotherapy phase. After an additional hour of observation, the patient will be sent home with the appropriate strength solutions to continue that dose of peanut at home on a daily basis. After the patient has successfully ingested the dose of peanut solution or suspension at home for one to two weeks, they'll return to the office for the next dose in the protocol. After each dose, the patient will be observed for an additional hour then they'll go home with that dose for another one to two weeks. So on and so forth over the course of an additional six to 12 months. There are three phases of oral immunotherapy for peanut. The first is a liquid suspension phase that involves taking doses of peanut flour suspended in distilled water and usually flavored with some sort of pow powdered juice solution. That dose will take you up to the equivalent of approximately one-tenth of a peanut. After that, we'll transition the patient to precisely measured capsules of peanut flour that are meant to be opened and mixed into either yogurt, applesauce, or another food vehicle of your choice. The capsule doses will take the patient from one-tenth of a peanut up to the equivalent of one-half of a peanut. And then it's time to go to the store and buy some peanuts. So we'll start with half a peanut and then the subsequent doses will go all the way up to 12 peanuts a day. Once the patient has been successfully consuming 12 peanuts a day for at least two to four weeks, we'll bring them back for what we call our 24 peanut challenge, where the patient will actually consume 24 peanuts in a single sitting with an hour of observation. 
If the patient successfully is able to ingest 24 peanuts, they are considered graduated.